know, have we gotten enough phones? Have we gotten enough, you know, cameras? Have we gotten enough? And I'm, I guess I'm kind of telling on myself at the same time because here I am making a podcast. Um, <clears throat> but still, like, is this is this what we've come where we've come now to where everything that we're doing is about making is about trying to capture some shot? Um, I was looking at some post somewhere earlier this week and someone was saying something along the lines of at what point do we stop trying to capture moments and just live in the moment? At what point can we put the phones down and put the, 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 the iPads down and, and put the, the cameras down and just enjoy the moment for what it is and not be so enamored by trying to be the next person to blow up and make a million bucks and and, and trying to trying to capture these moments to put on, on on social media for people to gawk at and be like oh my gosh you you having such a great life and this that and the third like at what point can we stop and just really enjoy life for what it is and I think that's indicative of where we are as as a culture, as a society right now. Like we spend so much time, and again, I'm kind of preaching to myself, so I kind of feel bad even in mentioning it, but I guess it's it's food for my soul too. Like we live in a culture now where we spend so much time trying to capture moments and less time enjoying the moment. Uh, I know my wife talks to me a lot about how she is so grateful that I've recognized even within myself that I spend, that I've spent so much time trying to, uh, you know, be in this, this moment space. And, and instead of trying to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Instead of trying to just capture everything that's going on in my life, that I'm actually taking the time to just enjoy being around people Enjoy enjoying being around my family and not being so worried about making sure that everybody else knows what I'm doing. And so I think for a lot of us, we haven't really taken the time or taken a chance to really step back and ask ourselves, hey, am I living life or am I trying to capture life? Um, am I really enjoying the things that, are, that I have around me? Do I enjoy the people that are around me? Or am I just so enamored by trying to capture the next moment that I can't even see the moment that's right in front of me? I can't see the people that are right in front of me. I can't see the friends and the family members that I have right in front of me. And so just watching these commercials and watching Apple, you know, uh, capitalize off of the the enslavement to trying to capture this moment and go viral and go uh, and, 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 and be seen by so many eyes and, you know, become the next Instagram supermodel or the next boy wonder or whatever the case is and make a quick buck. I think that it, that Apple has really captured what's going on with us and is exploiting it, basically. I mean, they... They basically have seen that people are going to continue to take their pictures and they're going to try to continue to capture the moments and try to make, you know, uh, epic, epic moments out of something as simple as eating a meal for the day. And again, it's just really indicative of where we are as a people, uh, where we are as, as a society. And I want, again, just wonder a little bit what, where else is there for us to go now? Like we're so super saturated with it all that it kind of just makes all the stuff that we do almost a moot point because now that everything is, everything is special, it's really difficult to find what truly is um, special for us as a society uh, because everything has become so epic and everything has to be captured and everything has to be a viral moment and everything has to get a thousand likes on social media. So, <clears throat> Something else that puzzled me this week, I saw that IKEA paid forty-six million dollars. That's right, forty-six million dollars to a family uh, 
for uh, damages after a dresser fell on their kid. $46 million was paid out to this family. And I could not understand the details of the suit. Um, I wasn't able to find enough information to kind of make sense of everything that I was reading. And so rather than try to, um, you know, become an expert in the law, I just kind of let other people kind of help me to understand what I couldn't understand about it. And so what people were saying to me was that there are um, some, there, there's some litigation that has happened in the past with Ikea that I didn't even know about. Uh, some litigation that happened with them and they uh, were given an opportunity of sorts to try to rectify the fact that they had had some issues with this same dresser once before. And so they had the chance to right the wrongs of the dresser that had fallen on other children in the past. And the fact that this dresser fell on a kid caused um, uh, the, those who were in charge of uh, how much the damages would be to be able to sue for a ton of money. And that family won a ton of money. Uh, and again, $46 million. That's a lot of money. It, it's a, that's, a, that's a lot of money. And so I, so I spent a few days trying to understand, like, what, how did they measure $46 million to be the answer for the crime that was committed? Uh, how was it that they were able to say, yes, you all deserve $46 million for your child being, um, being killed by this dresser? for negligence. And again, I asked around and people gave me some answers. It still kind of doesn't make any sense to me, but again, it is what it is. I'm really not even here to try to argue up or down whether or not $46 million is excessive or whatever the case is. Um, Cause really and truly like I, I have too many questions to even try to wrap my head around whether or not the, the suit itself is, is justified. And I know that I might get crucified for this, but it is what it is, because these are the thoughts that I was thinking about it, right? First of all, like how does a child um, get onto a dresser of that, of that sort to the point where this child ends up falling and, you know, or the dresser ends up falling and crushing this kid? The, the second, like, okay, so y'all have known that this dresser has been this defective for this long, and you've already been sued about it, you know, once before. Like, why does the dresser still exist? Why is that dresser still in circulation? Like, why was why is that dresser now still a part of what y'all are selling at this point in time, knowing what you've already had to endure because of the dresser situation? Three, like, if, if, if what they said is accurate and it's happened at a store, then why was the dresser not, you know, secured at the store? Like, again, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer. Like, I don't think that this particular dresser was standing next to a wall. So you can't put a dresser with a wall backing. You, know, you can't secure it because there's no wall to secure it to. So it's not like they were thinking to themselves, oh, let's secure these things, da 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 da. But it's like if y'all saw that this dresser was defective, if you saw that this dresser wasn't, you know, wasn't doing what it was supposed to do, it's already cost y'all fifty million dollars before. Why now have this thing sit still sitting out in circulation? At some point, you have to use a little bit of sense. You're like, you know what? I don't think we need to have this dresser out there in the open like that. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure they weren't thinking some kid was going to try to grab up on it or anything, but I mean, kids are kids. And 
Yes, I know that we kind of want to look at the parents and be like, you know, where were you when the kid was climbing up on the dresser and all this kind of stuff and that sort of thing and, 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 and call negligence and things like that. As a matter of fact, I was talking about this to, um, to um, a bar uh, barista over at, um, over at uh, the wing store. Uh, a couple of a uh, couple of days ago, and that was the thing that she was harping on herself. Like, you know, where were the parents, and why would the parents let this child do this, that, and the third? And while there is a little bit of truth to that, at the same time, I can honestly say, you know, I've allowed my kids to go roaming around in the store before. You know, especially in a furniture store. A furniture store is boring. You don't really care about going to a furniture store to look at furniture. I remember when we bought furniture for this house. I wasn't particularly excited about being at the furniture store because being at the furniture store is boring but you know we had to buy the furniture and I had to have some input because otherwise I'd be sitting on stuff that I don't like so I had to be there and because I had to be there and Nicole had to be there the kids had to be there and so yeah I, I remember letting my kids roam around a little bit I told them don't go too far don't do the duh, duh, duh and you know I'm make sure I'm watching you at all times as best as I can but yeah, I, I was that parent who let that child kind of roam around and do their own thing. And so I, I can kind of understand. Like, I don't think the parents were the devil per se. I don't think that they were being so negligent to the point where they're like, oh, no, no, where's my kid or whatever. Um, but, you know, at some point it's like, you know, sometimes we allow kids to be kids. And yes, although he was too. You know, sometimes you let a kid be a kid. I don't think, again, I don't think it was the devil that was trying to, you know, have this kid, you know, uh, so the parents so negligent to the kid to the point where he was being ignored uh, to the point where the situation happened. It still happened, and there's nothing, nothing anybody can do about that. Um, and so I think that the only other point that I've, that I've been thinking about with this situation is the fact that, man, you know, I'm still trying to understand how you measure the value of life um, when it comes to situations like this in litigation. Like, the, let me tell you something. $46 million. I, I know Ikea is worth a whole bunch, and so I'm confident that they could probably, you know, get it and give it to them and be done with it or whatever. But $46 million is a lot of doggone money. Like, and so I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm like, how did y'all measure that? How do you measure the value of a person's life up against the value of the value and the measure of a company? One of my friends on Facebook was telling me that uh, they, they were basically trying to, or what they probably did was measure how much it would take for Ikea to finally do what they need to do. And they figured up $46 million would hurt them enough to where they would change their standards and change the things that they need to do so that maybe they um, they could prevent this from happening happening again in some kind of way. Um, so, again, I don't know how they measured $46 million. I, I'm very uncertain as to how they came up with that dollar figure. And even in the midst of that being the dollar figure that they came up with, there is no amount of money. There's no amount of dollars that's going to replace that child. There's no amount of money that's going to make that family feel better about themselves. Because I know me, if that was my child and my child got crushed by a uh, by anything, you know, I would probably ball my eyes out till kingdom come. I would need counseling for the rest of my life, and it would be very difficult for me to get up to get up every morning to go do what I need to do to continue sustaining life for myself and my in my. And so I am convinced that even though they may have had, they may have that money and they may end up, you know, living in, you know, a mansion on the hill and all that kind of stuff, no amount of money is going to replace that child. I mean, if it does, then it's just some heartless monsters. Um, but I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody's thinking along the lines of, yeah, I got this money and my life is all great now because there's still a, a child's life that was lost in the midst of it all. Um, and so, again, it doesn't change the fact that, you know, the child is gone, but uh, we do try to take solace in the fact that they were compensated for, you know, the, the pain and the frustration and the issues uh, that will be, you know, that will definitely be coming in, in, in the future if they haven't already come through. Uh, so, you know, again, you know, just it's a sad situation and I, am, and I'm, I feel very bad for the families that have had to deal with all this and. 
I'm praying that their souls are 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 healed. Uh, that they know that um, regardless of what happens, that God is in control. Um, even though I know it's it's an old cliche, uh, but you know the greatest hope that you can have in is in the hope of a savior. Uh, because in in situations like this, that's sometimes the only thing that's going to get you through is knowing that Christ is still on the throne and that Christ still knows and Christ still sees and that he will comfort us even in the midst of the greatest, um, darkest hours of our lives. Uh, so, so yeah, right now, um, what I'm going to try to bring y'all closer to it so you can see, um, right now I'm working on um, the necklace piece right here. That's where I'm at right now uh, with her, with the first grace. That's what I'm working on right there. So trying to get a few more of these pieces together um, to kind of get that necklace going right there. And so that's where I'm at right now. I'm kind of working on that. Here's another thing that I'm puzzled about today. Um, and I definitely solicit any of your comments and questions on those things if you have any. Because uh, I am definitely puzzled by this. And, and I, I talked I talk to my wife about this. I talked to my friends about this. I consulted Jesus about this and I I'm still just as puzzled now as I was when I um when I first um asked when I when I first asked about this. So here it is. Um what had happened was alright so Australia's got this fire burning, man. And and and, and listen, I, when they told me that Australia, hey boo, how you doing? Come in. Australia is burning right now, right? Australia is basically on fire. The whole continent is on fire. Not just a piece of Australia. Now she's fine. Um not just a piece of Australia, not like a quarter of Australia. No, all of Australia is on fire. Australia is burning. I have never in my life heard of an entire country being on fire. Like, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. Now, I don't know the reasons why, and that's not what I'm really here to debate about because that's not what puzzled me. You know, even though I'm very puzzled by the fact that Australia is on fire. But that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm bothered by. So, this lady... And I don't have the details of her name. Again, if my computer would work with me, I was going to have all this stuff pulled up so I could read all the details, try to do a little bit of journalistic work. Because again, I'm not a journalist. I just read a lot. Um, so this lady, this lady, very nice looking lady, you know, um, whatever. She decides that she wants, she, she, she's seeing the issue with Australia burning and all the animals dying and all the people losing their homes and all sorts of kind of stuff. And she wanted to do something about it. Good for her. Wanted to do something about the fact that Australia is on fire. That Australia is burning like nobody's business. So she decides that she's going to raise money for Australia. Raise money so that the Australian nation can have some relief. And more power to her, man. I'm very glad that's what she wanted to do. More big ups to her. And so what she decides to do to raise money is to sell naked pictures of herself. She sells naked pictures of herself and raises over the last count that I saw. Last count was over $500,000. This lady sold naked pictures of herself in relief efforts to the Australian nation and raise $500,000 just from selling naked pictures of herself. $500,000. Now, herein lies the rub for me because I was not, I, I, was, I wasn't so much as confused or frustrated or anything like that. It was just really puzzling to me because I asked the question to my friends, and I asked the question to my wife. I didn't ask the barista, although I should have asked her, but I don't think we had enough time because my food was ready, and I was ready to go home. But I asked them, like, does the ends justify the means when it comes to selling yourself for the, for the sake of 
another country and their plight. Like I and I and I was in I and I was it, 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 I was torn because I, I I know I know I know selling naked pictures of yourself is not the best thing in the world to do. I'm fully aware of that, and I'm not saying that it's something that any of us should do. So in no way, shape, or form am I trying to endorse selling naked pictures of yourself. I'm, I'm, that's not what I I'm, I'm not trying to do that. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, tell anybody else to do that. So here it is. I, I don't know. I, you, you do what you want to do. At the end of the day, you're a grown person. And if you want to sell naked pictures of yourself, by all means, sell naked pictures of yourself. That's, that, that's, that's, that's up for debate as to what the, the morality of that. But let's take that off the table for a second. Again, this lady raised $500,000. $500,000. $100,000 so that the Australian people could have some type of relief. And she did it just by selling naked pictures of herself. Do the ends just by the means. Does the fact that she raised this money for a good for a, for a good a good cause, altruistic cause, it wasn't like she went and took the money and then ran off with it like some people have in the past where they said they were doing it for relief efforts only to come find out they were doing this so they can go on a vacation or how some people you know have um said to some people hey we're gonna get married but then come to find out later oh we're not getting married but we're gonna keep the gifts that you gave us anyway for the wedding like no no you're not doing that give my gift back so like the, do do the ends again justify the means did did what she did you know, the fact that she sold these naked pictures of herself, what is that justifiable? Then in the fact that she did it not so that she could make money off of it, but she did it so that she could give that money to the relief efforts in Australia. And so I was torn. I, I, I'm not going to lie. Because again, on one hand, I am, it, I, it, on, on one hand, it's like the ends don't justify the means. They don't justify the means at all. Because naked pictures of yourself and all, and all of the spiritual implications that come with that. Like, you know, it's pornography and, you know, people, and, 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 and so, yes. So, in, in that vein, I think the, the, the issue that was puzzling me was the, so the people that are buying the pictures, the people that are, you know, purchasing these things for this altruistic cause, like, are you buying the pictures because you want Australia to be better or are you buying these pictures to get yourself off? Yep, I said it and I said it just like that because I think that's where the problem lies with me. Like, I understand that, you know, it's for a good cause, you know, hopefully it's raising a lot of awareness. Other people are wanting to get involved in some kind of way, whether it involves selling naked pictures or yourself or not. Um, but people are aware of what's going on. It's causing them to make sure they're paying attention to what's going on. And hopefully a lot of good will be done in the end of, at the end of it all. But again, for the people who are buying these pictures, for the people who are, you know, giving their money away, no matter how much or how little of it it might be, you know, are you buying the pictures because you want to see Australia get better? Or are you buying the pictures because you just want some pretty girl to look at who decided you can look at her, um, you know, because she's selling her pictures to you and, you know, you can do it, basically you do whatever you want to do with them. Like, then I think that's the part that I got puzzled by because, again, it's like, I understand and get that she, you know, made this plea to help this country and, and you know, was asking for help and deciding to do what she did in order to get the help that the country needed. And that's all well and good. But for the people who are buying the who are buying the pictures, are you true? Are you do you care about Australia like that? Or do you really do you just want to get your rocks off? And I think that would be more insulting to me if this is the route that I took in order to get, you know, the money for uh to get the money for the relief efforts because again you know people are gonna do what they want to do let's let's be clear they're gonna they're gonna if they want if you want to do you want to sell pictures you're gonna sell pictures if you want to do this you're gonna do this you want to do that you're gonna do that but you know for the people who are buying the pictures like if, if, if you're if you're only buying them because you know it's an opportunity for you to look at a naked girl 
um, and you want to spend your hard on money on looking at a naked girl, then I, for me, I would find that insulting. That again, this is just me. This is just my opinion. I'm just spitballing here, you know. But this is just you know what I'm thinking. I would be insulted because it ain't about trying to help us. It's about trying to help yourself. And yes, we may get something out of it, and that's all well and good because again, the country's gonna need all the help that they can get far beyond. $500,000. I thank God for people like Lizzo who have taken their time, their harder time off of their tours and what have you, and gone out and actually helped people on the ground. Um, and again, now however you choose to help, however y'all are choosing to help, I am in no way trying to say one way or the other how to do it. You do what you do. But again, for me, I think that I would just be insulted by the fact that you, 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 you don't really care about me. You know, thanks, thanks be to God that you know that you did, you know, get the get the money and get the efforts and all that kind of stuff and raise the awareness and everything. But again, the, it for me, it's like I just I don't know how genuine that help is. I'm not sure how genuine the five hundred dollars, the five hundred thousand dollars would raise were for the people who donated. Again, I I don't know whether or not she took any of that money for herself. I think she said that. I think the report, the news report said that she sacrificed her. Instagram page uh, had to sacrifice her Instagram page in order to, you know, maintain the the, the, the money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, again, I wish I had the report in front of me so I could actually read it off, but my computer is just complete badonkus and I'm not worried about it. Um, but again, you know, I'm just 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 really puzzled because I'm I, again in her case, I'm, I don't know how to feel about that. She did a really great thing. By raising the money, um, I'm not really particular about her methods, but you know she did what she did. But again, if I were the people who are in this sad state of affairs in Australia, I just don't know if I would be particularly um, happy about the fact that you know these people gave these funds in the way that they did. And so again. Um, you know, just doing a little bit more work here, trying to find um, pieces to this lady's necklace, uh, so that way we can get more picture, a, a better picture of her at the end of it all. Um, it's coming together really nicely so far. This puzzle's probably going to take me a minute. Like I'm going to have to get really quiet and really focus on some stuff, or uh, try to go <coughs> off of this color and go to some other color and maybe start working on something else. I think all the browns and the grays are starting to kind of look the same to me. Um, let me check my phone real quick, see if anybody is saying anything you like. Say. Okay, okay. All right, hey Darius, how you doing? What's up, man? Um, you said it, it's kind of like we are justifying sin in a way. And see, yeah, that's it, so. Yeah, that's where it's at, man. Like that's where I'm. That's where I'm torn. That's where I'm torn at because it's like you know, okay. So do so do the ends because again going back to what I asked the first time do the ends justify the means do the ends make the fact that she did this thing okay like is that okay like again she raised the money but is it blood money basically because she's doing it at the expense of selling her body like you know and these people they, they, I, again just like I said I don't know. If when I give this money to this to this lady for these pictures, like, am I now, am I helping Australia or am I helping myself? Like, did I give this money because I wanted to give this money to Australia? I, could I have gone so far and say, you know what, I don't even care about the pictures. You know what, just give me the, um, just get, just, you know, take me, just give the money to Australia and I'm good. Like, I don't, so, so if for me, it's, 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 it's a, it's a very sticky place for me. Because, like I said, it's a good thing that she raised the money and everything, but did she raise the money in a way that, that glorifies God, which clearly we know the answer to that, I think. And, you know, is it, is it, is it worth it? Is it, is it worth, is it worth her selling her body so that, you know, that money can be, can go to an effort like Australia? Like, was it worth it? And so that, that so that's where I'm at with it, man. It's like I, I'm kind of hurt um, and kind of torn by the whole thing. Because uh, again, I don't know. I, I don't know whether or not you know we should be yeah, yay, good for her, or no, don't do it like that. Because um, again, it's, it's sometimes it ain't even about the, the the the. It's not. It's not 
about, it's not about the, it's not about what you're doing, but it's about how. It's about how you go about it sometimes. Uh, we talk about intent all the time and how it's, it's not about what you say, it's how you say it. It's not about, you know, how you say it, but why you say it. And so it's, it's again, it's one of those sticky areas because I'm, I'm with you, bro. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. I mean, I know how to feel about it, but I don't know how to feel about it because she did a great thing, but she did a great thing doing something wrong. Um, and again, we can split hairs on, well, this is her body. She do what she want to do. Yeah, that's all well and true. But, you know, you know, I could go to Vegas and do a whole lot of stuff. Don't make it right. You know, I could go, I could do a whole lot of things that I want to do. I mean, I'm right. Well, well, well within my right to do it. Hey, well, within my right to do it, but it doesn't make it right to do. Um, and so, again, that's something I'm puzzled about. Um, and I'd love to get y'all's thoughts on it. Um, so feel free to chime in uh, with any, any, any comments that you have. Regarding that, again, I, I, I got thick skins. So you can tell me however you feel about it because, again, I'm really just trying to generate conversation as I'm putting this puzzle together to let y'all know what I'm puzzled about this week. So, um, so um, there are two more things that I'm going to talk about tonight. Again, if y'all have any questions or comments, feel free to chime in as I'm putting this puzzle together. Looking at Josephine Walls, the three graces on tonight. Um, well, so... I'm, again, scouring um, the internet, and I stumbled upon this uh, story about this pastor who was killed by her husband while in the pulpit during a worship service. So, they, while they were in the middle of prayer, a uh, guy gets up and goes up to the pulpit and uh, everyone's thinking that he's going up there to go tell the wife something and he pulls out a knife and he stabs her multiple times and then proceeds to stab himself in the stomach three times and then slit his own throat. And this is all in the middle of the worship service. Uh, it needs to say everybody was shocked. We took them to the hospital and she was pronounced dead there at the hospital, he died on the scene. Um, and reports uh, later revealed that the two of them were in a spat over who owned the church. And over the course of uh, those uh, last couple of years, uh, they had become estranged. They said that he had moved out of the house. Um, and she actually had um, done a police report or tried to do a police report uh, to get him arrested uh, for attempting to take her life. But he basically had a plot on her life. And the police had to let him go, citing that they did not have enough to hold him. And so, and I think they said that that was two weeks prior, about one or two weeks prior to the incident that took place at the church. And so, again, they had been arguing over who owned the church that they both started. They had both started this church. Um, and uh, eventually, what the report said is that she had had the uh, ownership changed from them to him. And so, uh, as I read this story, like it, 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 it hurt my, it hurt my soul. First of all, hurt my soul because, like you know, this is where we're at right now, man. This is where we're at. Like we are so bent on owning things that we go so far as to want to have ownership of churches and. I've seen this happen in more ways than one, um, and go and, and it can get really nasty. Uh, this whole idea of who owns the church, um, you know, if you're living down here in the deep South Georgia, you know, you're gonna run into some, you know, some some people who feel like the church is theirs, and they they will fight tooth and nail anybody who is a perceived threat to their church, to their way of doing things, to their 
um, you know, the, to their monuments and their uh, sacred cows and idols. As a matter of fact, I was talking to one of my good friends um, about that earlier today, about some of the issues that the church faces when dealing with change and progress, that sometimes you start messing with sacred cows in the church and it causes people to act up in ways that you would not even believe um, and they do so in the name of God um, and because they feel like they are justified in believing what they believe and treating people the way they want to treat them for the sake of trying to hold on to the way things have always been. Um, and so to, to hear that this guy uh, killed his uh, ex-wife, separated wife, whoever she was to him at the time, uh, was very heartbreaking uh, because it's indicative of how sick our hearts can sometimes be when it comes to the ownership of things in this world. Uh, when it comes to the church, I mean, we got to understand, sure, you know, it's very, it, it's heartbreaking, man. It, it's heartbreaking because the church was never designed by Christ to be a multi-tiered, uh, multi-level business. It was never, it was never designed to be that way. If you go as far back as the early church, they never were worried about church budgets and and trying to meet quotas and trying to gain memberships and trying to get people out of their money and stuff. And I can have a whole conversation about my thought processes on money and all that kind of stuff, and that's, that's another conversation for another day, unless one of y'all really wants me to go there, because I'm not afraid to go there, but again, another topic for another day, um, but what just makes me sad is that you have some people who are so bent on owning something that they feel like the church is, some, is just another thing that can be owned, when God never intended for the church to be something that's supposed to be trading hands and supposed to, you know, result in business contracts and, and things of that sort. Like, that's not that's not what God had in mind when he thought to put the church together. The church was never meant to be a building. It was always meant to be a people. And although we do need buildings to, 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 to serve in and things like that, God never intended for the building to ever replace the people. I remember watching... Um, Thor Ragnarok and man it blessed my soul when at the end of Ragnarok and they're all getting ready to 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 to, to leave and they're feeling kind of uh, kind of sad over the fact that their world is falling apart um you know Thor goes back to uh what he what what his dad said to him when he said the 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 uh, that that um uh, uh what's the name of the uh, planet uh uh, I can't think of what his plan, his home planet's name is. is. If y'all can tell me what it is, let me know. Um, but he said that they're not a planet. They're not a place. They're a people. They are a people. And that's the church, man. That's the church. Stan Lee, I don't know if he was a Christian or not, but he's shown up had a lot of Christian ideas in all his movies, man. And we can have a whole nother conversation about, you know, Avengers and all that kind of stuff and how much God is in all them just wrapped up in all those movies. As a matter of fact, I may do that during the um, podcast one day. Um, but that's just indicative of what the church is. The church was never meant to be a building. You know, yes, we have buildings and yes, we serve in buildings and thank God that we have them. But God never intended for us to make the church a place. Uh, it never meant for it to be a place first. It's always meant to be a people first. Like if your if all your churches, all the churches in, in, in the world burn down today, I'm not advocating we burn down churches, but heaven forbid something that did that catastrophic happen. Would you still be able to go? Would you still be able to worship? Would you still be able to have a relationship with God with other people? Or is your going to church contingent upon it being in a comfortable AC unit building, um, you know, where you're able to sit back, relax, and let somebody cater to you all Sunday? Like, that's not what church is supposed to be. It's never what church was designed to be. It was never meant to be this way to where, you know, it's all about just being comfortable. It was meant for us to be a family, to be a unit, to be, uh, uh, to be you know, people who are willing to get in the fray and actually walk alongside one another and grow together as the people of Christ. Um, it was never meant to be something that's meant to be owned by anyone. No one can own the church. 
No matter what church you belong to, no matter whether you founded the church that you belong to, no matter whether, you know, you are the pastor, CEO of the church on paper, the church doesn't belong to one person. The church, even if you found it, it doesn't belong to you. You are just a steward over a people that God has decided to give you stewardship over for a certain period of time until he calls you home to glory. It's just like Solomon found out. Man, we're all going to get old. We're all going to become crusty. Someone's going to take our place and we're going to be mad at them for making all the changes in the world that they're making and try to serve the next generation while this generation and being the generation that continues to stay in the next generation's way of, um, of being able to, you know, make the world better for them um, and to make the uh, and make the not even the worship experience, but to make the discipleship process, you know, uh, 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 relevant uh, for them. And I'm not advocating that we, you know, old school versus new school. So please don't go out there trying to say, hey, he trying to say it again. But no, what I'm saying is that for far too long, we've, we've turned, we, we have turned church into something that people um, have rights to. And the church was never meant to be, it was never designed for, you know, for ownership as if it's a proprietary thing. Like, it's all about being a people. Now, yes, in order for us to exist in our countries and in our nations and things like that, we have to have people in place like trustees in order to be able to do the business part um, to exist in our, in our um, respective countries. But it was, but God never intended for, you know, for trustees to, to, or, or, or ownership of the church to be such to where, you know, we have to be all up in arms because, you know, one person owns this or one person owns that or one person doing this, one person owns that. This dude killed this lady in a worship service. He stabbed her in a worship service. He stabbed himself in a worship service. He slit his throat. In a worship service, do you know how corrupted your mind has to be to have the audacity while people are praying to the God that you say you serve to do something as heinous as that? That's what we're talking about here. Like our hearts can become so callous and can become so mean and can become so heartless to where we're willing to go into a worship service of, of a place where we say we serve God, the same God is that they're supposedly serving and go in and do something as heinous as killing the leader that God has placed to shepherd their hearts and then killing yourself in the process, all because you felt like you were cheated out of what you felt was yours. That's how messed up this situation is, but it's indicative of how messed up our hearts can be and how some people are willing to do some of the most heinous things to make themselves feel like they've gotten ownership of their church and it's their church and they're going to do what they want to do with their church. And so, again, again, it just, it just it, it's puzzling, but at the same time, I understand where it's coming from, because when you allow your heart to get to a place where you feel like this is your church, or this is your ministry, or this is your thing, and no one else can have it except you, and if that, and no, and if you can't have it, no one else will, that's when you know that your heart, you, you, may, you may need to go to God and be like, okay, let me ask God what's really going on with me, because this is getting a little out of hand, even for my taste, uh, but sadly, they're not going to be able to, to be here to tell that story, and our prayer and, it's, and hope is that, you know, they... I did have a walk with God where this discretion um, didn't cost them the kingdom. So, um, check real quick to see y'all had anything to say. I mean, it doesn't look like you did. Yeah, it doesn't look like any of you did. And so, um, just real, again, just kind of working on Josephine Wall's Three Graces. Uh, putting some of this... Puzzle together, about to switch to a different color. I think I've exhausted all the mind brain matter that I can exhaust on this particular part of the puzzle. So I'm going to put this to bed for right now, kind of gather all the pieces up, and then I'll try to put them back together on another day and time when I can kind of see a little bit better. Switch over to another color. <clears throat> um, and so, uh, the last thing that I want to talk about today. Um, again, if anyone does have any questions or comments, you feel free to chime in um, and let me know what you're thinking. Uh, I do thank my brother uh, for um, for coming on real quick and soliciting um, soliciting some comments to what we were talking about today. Um, 
Hopefully next time my technology will work a little bit better so that way we can simulcast this thing the way that I want it to because um, it's been definitely not happening the way that I wanted it to today uh, like I hoped it would. Um, I was hoping to do a whole lot more than what I'm seeing right now. Um, let me see if it'll, if it'll do it this time. About time, man. Yes. Lee, that's all I wanted to do. All right. So here's the last thing that I want to talk about today. Um, you guys, again, feel free to chime in um, however you feel. Um, here's, some, here's something that I am puzzled by. Prince Harry and Princess Meghan Markle decided they're going to give up the kingdom and they're going to move to Canada. They said, bump being prince and princess, I don't care about that. I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'm going to go on, and I'm going to live in Canada. That's what we going to do. So, I ain't worried about being no prince. She ain't worried about being no princess. We finna move. We finna go live it big, and ain't nothing y'all can do about it. Let me tell you something. I couldn't be more proud of that boy. I couldn't be more proud of him. I couldn't be more proud of her. Because what that tells me is that all that stuff that comes with being a prince and a princess ain't all that is cracked up to be. And I know for a lot of us, we have a lot of dreams of becoming princes and princesses and kings and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of us will go through go through the extremes in order to claim these, you know, uh, titles and all these roles that we so desire so badly because we want somebody to know who we are and to feel like we have some type of ownership or some love and some prestige and all that kind of stuff. But man, when I tell you that 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 mark that made my heart smile to hear them announce that they are no longer going to be in the kingdom. They're going to try to become financially independent on their own um, and move out of the country to do so. That really made my heart smile. Uh, really made my heart smile. Made my heart smile uh, again for a number of reasons. Uh, one, um, I haven't paid enough attention to what has been going on in um, Great Britain. Um, I know they got some Brexit issues going on right now. Um, I, again, I don't know enough about any of that stuff to be able to comment on it the way that I, the way that I could otherwise. Like I just, I just don't know enough. Um, so I leave, I leave all that stuff about what's going on over there to those who are more, much more well versed in it than I. Um, but what I will say is that, you know, this world can be very mean. Um, I grew up in the time of Princess Diana. Um, I didn't really know a lot about what was going on with her other than she was in the TV a lot, um, growing up. And, you know, I, um... I mean, I really, again, just didn't know enough about what was going on with her to know what the big deal was and why everybody wanted to take a picture all the time. It just seemed really insane how many people were trying to take a picture of her uh, because she really wasn't doing a whole lot that deserved being in the spotlight the way that people were wanting to put her in it. Um, nevertheless, um, people were... Um, Wanting her picture all the time. They were wanting to see her all the time. And so that fateful day, that fateful night, when they, um, you know, when the paparazzi was chasing her car down. And I don't know, again, I'm not really particular of the details. I just know that, you know, something happened to where the car ended up crashing. And when it did, you know, she, she died. In the midst of that, and I can remember watching the news and hearing the reports and watching the funeral online, not online, on TV at the time, and it was just a very sad uh, state of affairs. And I rem and I, I think I can remember uh, watching uh, the kids, uh, Harry and Edward, um, and how they had to deal with the fact that their mom was now dead. And I remember not being too happy about that, um, being very upset with uh, paparazzi 
um, and people who were in that business who were always just trying to find another photo to take. Um, even though I know it was their job, it was what they were paid to do, so it's not like they were necessarily being, you know, <sighs> callous, I guess is the word. I don't know. Um, they were doing their job, but there was a, there was a way they could have gone about it that would have made a whole lot more sense than how they were doing it. Um, nevertheless, I, I remember watching that growing up and I remember just feeling very sorry for, um, both of them because now they didn't have their mom. Um, and I don't know what I would do if, you know, I lost my mom and I, so I was very, I was, I, it, it kind of hit close to home. Me and my mom, uh, when I was growing up, we grew up very close and, um, I remember a lot of the stories my mom would tell of the sacrifices that she would make in order for us to be where we are in our lives. And so, you know, I could only imagine if I would have lost my mom at that, at that young of an age, what type of impact that would have had on me. Um, and so when I heard about this and I was talking to one of my friends about, uh, what was transpiring with Harry and 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 him deciding to go uh, to, deciding to, to to leave? One of the things my friends told me was that she was that 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 she felt as though the situation was becoming too traumatizing for him, and as a result of becoming as traumatizing as it was. He didn't want to live. He didn't want to relive that. He didn't want to go through that again. He didn't want to lose another family member to the paparazzi, especially his wife. Um, you know, this 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 woman is the uh, mother of his child. Um, I mean, they they love each other, and he was not about to lose another family member to the press. Um, not like this. And to see all of the, the hatred and the racism and the, the classism that she was enduring because of the fact that she's half black, which as an aside, I didn't know she was half black until somebody brought it up. Watching Suits, the last thing I was ever thinking was the fact that she was black. So when she became the princess or was becoming the princess and everybody was like, we finally got one in there. I'm like, what y'all talking about? And when I look at her now, I still think the same thing half the time. Like, what y'all talking about? But I ain't trying to question nobody blackness. She, she black, she been black, she dealt with black, all that. So I'm, that's not, that's not here nor there. You know, I'm just throwing that out there as an aside. I didn't know she was, she was black. Just me, I didn't know. Um, but I definitely know now, especially after everything that I have uh, been reading over and watching what she's had to endure and what Harry has had to endure and what they've gone through for the past um, several months post um, her um, getting married, not even before getting married um, to him. Um, and it's just been really indicative of how vile our, uh, our, our our people can still be, um, and I say people with a broad brush, all people, we can still be some very vile, some very callous, some very evil, some very mean people when it comes to how we treat one another. It, 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 it baffles my mind to know just the lengths that we are willing to go so that we can make ourselves feel better at the expense of somebody else's soul. It, it's really hurtful. To see the links that we're willing to go, the things that we're willing to say, the things that we're willing to do, um, just so that, you know, someone else can feel, um, you know, better about themselves. Like, it's just really, it's just really hurtful. What's going on, Rob? It's good to see you, man. Very good to see you. Glad you're on. Um, like, it's just really indicative of, of how, how, how hurtful, you know, we can still be. And for Harry to say, you know what? We ain't got to put up with this. So what if I'm the prince of, of England? So what if she's the princess of England? Like, we don't have to put up with this. We ain't got to deal with this. 
I ain't, I ain't got to continue to subject myself to this. My wife doesn't can have to continue to subject herself to this. I definitely don't want my child to feel subjected to this. So no, I'm, I'm not going to subject us to this at all. I'm going to continue to, um, we, we going to live our lives. We going to do what we do and y'all can have all this. And, you know, and it, it's so funny, you know, it's like a catch 22, the darn if they do, darn if they don't, because it, it, from what I've been, from what I've been seeing now that they've decided that that's what they're going to do, that they're going to leave the country that they're going to become financially independent. They're not going to be, you know, up under mom and not, not going to be up under the queen and none of that kind of stuff no more that, you know, people are just as upset with them doing that too. And so it's like, it's a, it's a catch 22. You can't win. Either you're going to make people upset because you're staying or you're going to make people upset because you're going. But either way, you're going to make people upset regardless. And so they decided, you know what, chunk the deuces, we're going to do what we do. And so, again, I'm so proud of, um, uh, of Harry for making that decision, for deciding, you know, to choose, you know, cho to basically choose to chose his wife. Man, if that ain't indicative of Genesis that when you are married, you leave father and mother and the two become one flesh, it don't get more indicative than that. Like, that is exactly what he said. He's like, bump this. It, it, it's us. We gonna do us, and we gonna do us well, and the heck with everybody else. I don't care about them. I'll, you know, I got you. As long as I got you and my son, we gonna be all right. And so I expect that we could probably gonna see her in some movies and in some TV shows in the near future. They might, you know, put suits back on for one more season just so she can be on it again. I mean, we do, we don't know, but you know, again, I'm just so proud of them. Um, because again, it's just it, it's just really sad to see that that's the world that we live in right now, where everybody's so, uh, where people are still just as frustrated with race and you know class and all this other stuff, man. It's like it's 2020, man. Like we're still in this space where we gotta be so hateful all the time when it comes to people that don't look like us, people that don't think like us, people that don't act like us. And I mean, it's just like. Y'all, we, we spend so much time and energy and effort on things that do not matter. When are we going to grow up? When are we going to realize that, you know, we could be so, we, we should be so much further along than this. We should be so much greater than this. We should be so much better than this. We don't have to continue down the paths of our ancestors who thought that, you know, it was okay to treat people the way that they were treated. Man, we don't have to keep doing this. And it's, and it's on all sides. It's not just one size fits all because, you know, blacks can be just as racist as whites. Whites just as racist as blacks, man. Like, no, no one in, in this day and age, there's, I mean... There's never been a reason, but there is no reason for us to hate each other the way that we do at this point, right? I mean, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who's sitting on the throne. It doesn't matter whose mouth is the loudest, even in the media. Like, it makes no sense for us to be as hateful as we are. You know, when you have your own mind, you can make your own decisions. You can decide to do what you want to do. This is why it's so indicative that we need a daggum savior. Because we can't, we can't pull this off on our own. We can't, we can't pull off world peace by ourselves. You know, because just as soon as we try to make a little bit of progress, here comes somebody knocking the whole thing down with a simple tweet. And so, nah, it's like, that's why we need a savior, man. We can't, you can't depend on, you know, uh, uh, you know, heal the world speeches and things like that in order to get people to be galvanized to want to make any lasting change. You need a savior to transform a heart or two or a billion in order to make the change that we need more so that, you know, a prince and a princess can live in their castle and not feel like the entire world's against them just because they're married. Like, it, it, it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be that way. But once again, it's the world that we live in. And so it just is what it is. It's sad. It's depressing sometimes. But it's just indicative of the world that we live in and why our hope cannot be in man. It's got to be in God. Because if you put your hope in man, man's going to let you down. Man's going to make mistakes. Man's going to turn at any given moment, depending upon how they feel or what news reports being put out there. Um, and so, you just again, I'm, I'm grateful for them, for choosing them. I'm grateful that they chose themselves. They bet on themselves. And they're going to go and get theirs. They're going to live happily ever after, man. Like I said, they're they, they going to be all right. You know, they're going, they're going to they're going to do great things and they're going to be shining examples of what it means to be in a relationship where it's, it's not about trying to maintain, you know, the status quo, but it's about loving one another in a way where both people are feeling fulfilled and satisfied in their lives 
and um, being willing to say, you know, what price are you willing to pay for peace? And if the price is too high, then you got to you got to cut something off and being willing to do that, having the courage to do that and having the courage to be able to do it together um, as a couple. So that's all I got for today. I'm going to show you all my, um, my final progress on this before I cut this off. Um, this is, again, what I um, worked on today. Uh, we got a lot of her, a lot of the first grace um, finished here in there. So that's what we've been working on in that. And then we also, I found this edge piece right here where some of these butterflies are. And so I um, added that on there as well. 